All right, so today we're going to talk about blogging. Part of SEO is um, creating content on a regular basis for the search engines to find. That's the big secret about the search engines. They want to show you, uh, they want to show your stuff to people when people search, but they want to show your best stuff, your latest stuff, your most relevant stuff. If you create a website, uh, so, you know, I'm a bakery, and my competitor down the street is a bakery, and we both have a website. We both created a website a year ago. But if I am using my site on a regular basis, I'm updating my site on a regular basis, my site could have more possibility of being found compared to the competitor. Because they just made the site, they left it, and Google or Bing and Yahoo, etc., they, they, um, they see this site's newer than that site. Let's show the content of the newer site compared to the competitor. And the way you get that newer uh, content is through blogging. So I'm going to show you some examples first of blogs, uh, and then we'll talk in detail about advice and such. Go ahead and open your web browser, and we'll go first to this website. Uh, I'll show a direct example first. You can go to pmdinteractive.com slash blog. So this is my company's website. We've got a blog there. The address, of course, simply the name of the site slash blog. That's becoming a, like a standard thing there. If you, uh, add, if you add a blog to your site, it's called blog. We talked about that in uh, a, a little while ago when we talked about WordPress uh, back on WordPress.com. Remember, uh, we we set up a static page. If we set up our static page, we can put the blogs onto a page called blog as a placeholder. If you don't set up the static static page, it'll show up on the home page. For this assignment, it doesn't matter if you set up a static page like this, or if you leave it uh, the default, which is that it's going to put your, uh, your blogs on the home page. doesn't matter which of the two you do. Um, the point is that you are going to write some blogs, and I'll pull up the assignment in a little bit. But here's, here's our company. We do web design and social media and all the stuff that I'm teaching you here. And we've got a blog. And really, the, every kind of business can have a blog. Every kind of business should have a blog. If the search engines are going to rank your site better than the competitors, if you're updated, you need to blog. You need to be publishing some content out on a regular basis. Because just changing your logo is not good enough. Just adding a brand new link to the home page is not good enough. Changing the picture, that's not good enough. You need to create content. And I saw two hands. I didn't see who raised them first. Robert. It's once a week. One, if I put one article once a week on my blog of 500, uh, close to 500 words, mm -hmm. is that like super duper or something? That's super above the mountain, above it. Yeah. Okay. Once a week, 500 words, that's a lot. That's great. If you're able to do that much, I'm going to set a kind of like a bit more of a attainable bar for us as beginners, but that's advanced. 500 words every week, that's advanced. Sooner or later, I'm going to run out of DUI yeah. topics, and I'm going to have mm -hmm. to start going into other criminal offenses. Exactly. But it still works, right? It does. So then that's why that's a big thing. Burnout. If you're the only person that's doing this blogging, you're going to burn yourself out with all of that content so quickly. So if there is some Price value. Huh? Twice a month. Is that still super duper? That's still really good. Okay. Really good still. Twice a month. E even, you know, 200 words. Twice a month. We'll, we'll get to some details in a moment. But right now, you're doing. it sounds like you're doing it really well, putting out a lot of good content Joey. with just those numbers. Uh, Joey. Is there, is there, you showed me the one site, which is an amazing site, where you can download pictures for free, or you can buy them too for free to download. Is mm -hmm. there something like that for blogging? Well, here's the problem. You don't want that. You don't want to pay for someone's pre-written blogs. Because if you buy them, so can a thousand other people. And the search engine see that there's a thousand and one blogs with the same posts. And then it doesn't help us. Yes, Omar. Um, so like, 
with, with, with websites like uh, YouTube, there's usually like a, a specific day where a lot of a lot of a uh, um, activity. Yeah, a lot of activity occurs, and that's like on a Sunday. Is there a similar uh, uh, poll that you can find that could help you with blog writing when you could just upload a blog and maybe catch people's interest? Well. Way? Unfortunately, people ask that a lot, but unfortunately there's no good answer for some of these things because even for YouTube, you might say, yeah, there's a lot of activity on, uh, on YouTube, perhaps on a Sunday, but maybe it's to see a specific kind of thing. Maybe my financial news blog posts are not a big hit on Sunday. Maybe they're a bigger hit on a Monday. So the answer that I'm getting at is that any, any one-size-fits-all answer for some of these things about when should I do this doesn't quite fit for everyone because your particular audience might really respond and pay attention to you on a Tuesday and someone else's audience on a Saturday, and, and we don't know. So the thing to do about that is to try to post something on different days and such, and over time we're going to see our particular test the waters and we're going to see that our particular audience my particular audience is paying most attention on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and then I've got my answer so I'll talk about how much to write and all that in just a moment um, which which we're alluding to already but I'm showing you our site here are some examples we're a web design company and this goes back to the previous assignment about what what's the point of you being online what are you trying to accomplish on your website online on our website our online presence what we're trying to accomplish is for people to click right here request a free quote to get them into our you know into our inbox so that they can then start asking us how much do you charge what can you do for us and then go through the process of getting a sale to get another client so the purpose of our website is to get more clients and to a variation almost all of you are going to do the same thing I want people to come to my website to buy my product, to check out my paintings, to hire my band for a gig, to hire me to buy a house, whatever you're trying to do online. So as I say over and over in this class, whatever you're trying to do online, all the things I'm talking about will apply. So I'm trying to get people over here to our blog so that they read a few of our articles about how to use Peach Like a Pro, what are the best WordPress plugins, um, how to build an app in five minutes, all of this stuff. We're giving away all this free content. Now, obviously, some of these things, to some degree, are clickbait. You're not going to make a real app in five minutes. But you are going to get the um, basic foundation of, oh, if I download this software and if I set this up, then I can make my own app, which will take me six months. But we're giving away some free stuff to entice people. The blog checklist, that might be useful for this class. I'm giving away free stuff. Our company is giving away free stuff on a variety of topics related to web design and computers and social media and such. And that's going to be enough for some people to say, that's great, let me do it myself. Other people will say, I'm busy running my business. I don't have time for this. Oh, let me hire them. Request a free quote. If I'm a bakery, my goal for being online is to sell cupcakes. Online, I'm going to have a blog on my bakery website still that has you know the recipe of the month um, the uh, employee of the week I'm gonna be publishing blog content about the bakery about food things related you know the latest gluten-free trends or the latest diet trends or whatever I'm gonna be publishing that on my website hopefully then enticing people on my bakery website to click buy now at the best at the minimum maybe I'm gonna entice people on my recipe for cupcakes or whatever to click share and I'm gonna get people to share that post out to others friends and family and um, get more fame for us in um, in other social media spread our messages our name out to other areas because the search engines look at all of that they see uh, this content from their website is also on Twitter and it's also on Facebook and it's been shared three times ten times etc that helps our SEO popularity breeds popularity 
It's sort of a chicken or the egg, which, come fir which comes first. I want to get popular to get more traffic on the search engines, but the search engines won't display you unless you're popular, but I need to get popular to get on the search engine, but the search engine won't display me unless I'm popular. Well, the way you break that vicious cycle is you create content. You do blogging on a regular basis. How much exactly is really up to you? We had some ideas here about every week 500 words. That's a really, really, really high bar. Second, we said every other week. That's also really high. I'm going to say for beginners, for this assignment, if you've never done this, if you're doing it for real, who cares about the assignment? If you're doing it for real, once a month, 100 words is great to start off with. If you've never been blogging on your site, you're going from 0 to 60 already. 100 words once a month. Much better twice a month. Much better every week. Much, much, much better every day. Think about the websites you visit on a regular basis. They're probably blogs, something brand new to read, something brand new to look at, to watch, to listen to every day. Those are the sites that get lots of traffic something new every day. I can't do that. I don't have enough people in my company to write a blog every day for a business. Once a week is another high bar. Every other week, once a month. So for this class, as we'll go into detail, once a month, 100 words is a very good starting point. Question? Well, I'm sorry, I'm doing that wrong, sorry. Mm -hmm. And I started on January 1st. Mm -hmm. That means that on my site, by the end of the year, there's actually going to be 52 blog posts. Articles, and it, 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 that doesn't hurt you because there's so many and hard to sift through or anything? No, if you've got a lot of content um, that really doesn't hurt you unless the content is duplicate. If you're kind of writing the same thing over and over. So if I remove it, if I remove the first one after six months and then recycle it, you know, I wouldn't quite do that because the search engines keep track of all of that. Have you noticed that when you search, sometimes a result appears, you click on the link and the link is broken. But if you click, it still cached it. Google still saves it. So that's why, you know, you've got, you seem to have a lot of content. I would stretch it out a little bit um, every other week. Uh, and it's, there's really not a bad thing as too much uh, unless it's varied. I mean, unless it's not varied. You don't want to do the same article over and over. Even, you know, I've got four paragraphs in an article, and I change the first paragraph, but have the next three the same. That's still also not, not, not good. You want varied content. Let's look at some examples here. So I've got how to use Peach Like a Pro. So I keep mentioning the social network. You click on it. We wrote this article. Um, all of these examples in, in our site here and others that I'll show you are good ideas to get started about what to write. Notice the structure. There was a little bit of a snippet, first of all, to catch your attention. If you're not a good, you know, if you're not, if you're not, if writing's not your thing, this will be a struggle. That's okay if you're doing this just for this assignment. For the longer term, it is a very important thing for you to do to be able to write, um, create content for your site. Uh, again, 100 words once a month for a beginner is a great goal. You're going to see you're going to write those 100 words relatively quickly. As you get better at it, as you think of more ideas to write, you'll be able to write more. So this particular article, um, so a little, little intro, you click to read more, then there's the rest. Um, notice uh, the subject itself here is very valuable because someone could do a Bing search, a Google search, how to use Peach. They've heard of this social network called Peach. How do I use Peach? I thought of a title of the blog post as a question of what someone could be searching for. Let's say I'm going to have a video game reviewing uh, website. I want to make money off of that. I, I play video games. I want to review them. So I want to review, you know, the latest game that's coming out. And so I will create a blog post with the keywords of what someone would be searching for for that, for that game. You know, I'd be searching for, is Mario Brothers Part 20 good? And then I would put that as the subject. 
and then write about it. Because when someone searches that on Bing or Google, this is Mario Brothers 20 good, my page could appear because it's got those keywords that people are searching for. Within it, I've also got here, what is Peach? Who made it? I've got these headings. This is not simply just bold text that uh, I selected and I made bold. In WordPress, a, a while ago when we looked at it, remember there was the ability for you to select text and to select, is it paragraph text? Is it heading text? Uh, the search engines like it when you create headings, when you divide up your document into little sections of content. If I took out all of those headings, if I took out the big bold words in the middle, this would be a big wall of text that might be less enticing for people to read. If I break it up into little chunks like this, someone can just quickly go read who made it, and maybe that's all they want to read, and that's fine. Um, they don't have to read the whole thing. The point is to educate people, and then we've also got a video here that's an extra step. Maybe they don't want to read it, they want to play it. Great, they'll play it, that's tied over to our YouTube channel, we're making, off, we're making money from people playing our videos on YouTube. We'll have a lesson on YouTube later on in the semester. Uh, but here we're trying to hit people in different ways. You want to read it? There it is. You want to watch it? There it is. We're breaking it down into chunks. People don't have enough time to read? Just read this little chunk that you might care about. Where can I get it? Which this needs to be updated because now there's the Android version of it. So I'll mention updates in a moment. But then uh, that's published. Um, people can leave a reply, get the conversation going, they can click the share button here and share, off, share it off to other networks. Then they should also see, uh, for the moment, oh there we go, it also then is saying, you read this one, why not read that one? So it's going to show you about Twitter, it's going to show you the blog checklist, more stuff to read. And that's easy to set up in WordPress. You publish one thing, it automatically links to something else that you wrote, so people can keep reading more of your stuff. The longer you keep people on your site, the more likely they can accomplish the goal, which is request a free quote, call us now, uh, hire us, etc. So this is one article. If I look at another one, build an Android app in five minutes. Again, same sort of concept, a little bit of snippet of text, some sort of title that people can search for divided into sections. This one we threw in a little emojis here and there just to break things up, you know, make it be modern. Another video on that one. There's a couple of other over here. You might want to look at the three-part series that I've got on our site about the blog checklist. It says more stuff than we need for this assignment, but many things to think about. Part one, part two, part three. If I have a great idea and I sit down and I write 1,000 words, I recommend do not uh, th do not throw your whole 100 words up in one blog post. Take that one, or 1,000 words, take those 1,000 words and think how you can divide it into two blog posts or three blog posts or whatever. If you wrote 1,000 words and I'm saying that 100 words once a month is great, with 1,000 words you've got 10 months of content. 100 words this month, a hundred words next month, keep them coming back to read more, more traffic back to your website. So here's part one. So you, it's, uh, this one's a little bit more wordy. You see a big you know, chunk of text, but it's still divided into number one, number two, number three. So people can read each individual piece, little eye-catching photo, and then part two. There was no part two at a certain point. There was only part one. People read part one, hopefully then came back for it, hopefully clicked the subscribe button to be notified when the latest one appears, then they come back and read part two and part three and so forth. So I would recommend on our, check out our site for some examples, check out the, the checklist here, it might help you in the assignment. Um, that's our site here, I'll show a couple of other examples in a moment, but any questions so far? So, yes? Um, you're giving a homework assignment to blog. If I'm already doing it on my website, could I just send you a link to that and get credit that way? Sure. It seems like you've uh, put in a lot of effort already, so sure. Yeah. Thanks.
Do you, do you use Yoast to guide your SEO efforts while you're writing a blog? Yeah, it is very useful, and we will be talking about that a little bit uh, later. Uh, but Yoast is valuable to help me sort of, uh, you know, figure out uh, what works and what doesn't. How do you spell Yoast? It's like toast, but with a W. I mean, with a Y. With a Y. Yoast. Yoast. Yeah, uh, there's lots of things that will help us. Uh, when Because we have WordPress, there's a lot of great plugins and extra software. And, and we'll get to that stuff. And if you want to look into it, there's a little plugin for free called Yoast. Y O A S T that sort of ranks your blog posts with a simple red. It's not so good of a post. Uh, orange, it's getting better. Green, it's good. Uh, so you can look into that. We'll do it together a little later. But for right now, I just want us to think about blogging a bit. Let me show another example here. Um, I mentioned this client over here, akiestexcoco.com. They have a blog, akiestexcoco.com slash blog. Mexican food restaurant. Um, the purpose of their website, top right corner, order online or book a table. They're trying people to get people to buy the food, either to book a table or to order online. But they still have a blog here. They still have a blog. And the purpose of this one, a couple of different purposes, but the main purpose is to be um, educating people about the food. Now, I shouldn't have shown it yet, but if I were to ask the class, uh, have you guys heard of chapulines? Uh, if you haven't, uh, these are a Mexican delicacy, which are basically grasshoppers. Uh, you fry them up, put a little lemon and chile and avocado, and there you got a taco. So um, for some people that's so gross, but for others it's a delicacy. Now what we've got for there then is a blog post about that food. There's another one coming out soon. Um, some of the content on this blog is to educate people of the food because it's Mexican food, but it's not nachos, it's not California burritos, it's not you know that kind of fare. It's traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. And so this restaurant sells a lot of unique things that you usually don't find in most Mexican food shops. For example, pulque. This is an alcoholic beverage. Uh, that plant there might look like um, an agave plant, and some of us know, what does an agave plant become one day? Euro. Tequila. An agave plant becomes tequila. This plant is the maguey plant, which is related to agave, and it can be made into an alcoholic beverage as well, which they sell at this restaurant, which is very uncommon in, in the U.S. So there's a blog post that tells about pulque, which comes from that plant, and what is pulque? That is a question that someone could search for on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, etc. And there's an article here with that question that could get found uh, when someone searches. And then it's got some text, some links, some pictures, a um, heading again to uh, break up the monotony, monotony of the text. Um, this one's a longer one to put out more content out there. There's a blog post also about the craft beer. You can, um, to some degree, repurpose existing articles. This one was published a little while ago, but then the restaurant got more beers. And so we updated the blog a little bit, added a new picture, updated it, and shared it again to social media. You don't want to rely on the same, you know, three or four or five blog posts. You do want to create, uh, you know, a good amount of them. And once in a while, then take an older one, maybe change it a little bit, update it a little bit, and share it again to your social media. When we get to that stuff, we'll talk about Twitter and Facebook and such because you create a great blog but you don't have traffic to your site therefore no one's reading your blog it's not helping you but if we also invest a little time and effort in Twitter or Facebook and such write a blog post share it on our Facebook share it to our friends and family 
maybe one of our friends and family on social media shares it to another influential person and then more traffic to the site. So it's all interconnected. I would love to do everything at once. We're going step by step, creating a website, writing a little blog content, talking about social media, further optimizing it, checking analytics. It's all a big process, little by little, 16 weeks. So in this assignment for this week is we're going to write a little bit. Um, just keep looking at other examples, the aguas frescas, the michotes, etc. There's an article here that gets a lot of uh, a lot of hits um, on wheat la coche. Who knows what wheat la coche is? Corn, like rotten corn, something like that. Not rotten, <laughs> but uh, infected, which is just still is, still doesn't sound so good. Like <laughs> but the thing is that wheat la coche is a corn that has been infected by fungus. And then it gets, you know, sautéed and add onions and spices and such, put it in a taco, and it tastes great. Well, people are like, ew. Well, yeah, people are like, ew, for mushrooms. And people are like I that for it. celery. And people are like that for onions, really everything. To What's that? Is that really safe to eat? Totally safe. I've had it, and it's just That's fine. Yeah, it's like corn, except that it's turning shades of, like, you know, grayish and greenish. It's a fungus. Like, what's another big famous like fungus? Blue cheese. Oh, blue cheese. Blue cheese is full of that fungus and yogurts. It's kind of hard to tell when it's going bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might get fuzzy. If it gets bad, it gets fuzzy. Then it's too. Then it's too. Yeah. So this one gets a lot of traffic. This is one of the most trafficked pages on the site because people are searching on Bing and Google. What's sweet la coche? That's exactly the question there. That gets found. The traffic shows. The analytics show that that gets a lot of traffic because people want to know what it is. And this page actually is linked to other, linked by other pages. You know, other pages that are talking about Mexican cuisine, they cite this page as a reference. And then their page gives this page more traffic. That's another reason why you want to do blogging. You want to write great stuff so that your peers are saying, that's great, let me link to that. When I write my own article, I'm going to link to that. You're going to get some traffic from other people linking to your blog if you write good stuff on a regular basis and publish it on social media and share it and get it known. So this one, text, picture, look at that, 41 shares. People are really interested on that one. Twitter used to show the number of shares, and there were a bunch of them, but now they took that away for some reason. And then you read that one and you're like, well, what else? Oh, not your average, ques average quesadillas? What's that about? Traditional Mexican food, a healthy choice. Let me read that. I like that. Let me share it with my friends and family on Facebook. More traffic back to the site. That's why it's so important to, to blog and to create content, because ultimately, hopefully, it'll get shared, and that'll give you more traffic, more fame. Let's look at another one. Here's another client, um, completely new, a uh, completely different vein, ElsaValencia.com. This is an up-and-coming um, jewelry designer. She designs all her own jewelry, 10 karat gold, uh, sells it on her site. So the purpose of the site is to sell the jewelry. Now, when you go to the, when you go to the actual uh, shop and you look at the jewelry and you're ready to buy. Uh, and you might say, hmm, let me save up my paycheck a little bit. Well, you might further really want to buy the particular jewelry after reading the blog posts, because in this one, we use the blog posts to really like focus on the story behind each piece, uh, you know, the meaning of it to really showcase uh, the, the pictures and such. Is that a word for us? Yeah. All of these that I've shown so far are WordPress. Um, so uh, this is working for her. She just was contacted by Vogue magazine, Mexican edition, Mexico edition. She's going to have some of her jewelry there on, on Vogue. Uh, there's some sort of other um, jewelry event coming up very soon. She's going to go go on that. Did you take them? No, on her on these she took them herself because she she likes to uh, make the jewelry herself and do the photography. But we did the, the site and the update and the shopping cart and, and all of that. But depends on the client. Um, 
But that's a paid version of WordPress. Then, if that's free. This one was, yeah, it's the it's the paid version. Exactly. With the plain old WordPress.com, no, it doesn't come with it. This one is, I think it's on GoDaddy. So whatever, wherever you set it up, that's when you can do the shopping cart version. The .com one is, is limited, unless you pay $399 a year for that, and I don't recommend it. So this blog is a little bit more visual. There is still a section up at the top where it's text with all of these various keywords and such that people could search for. And so a chunk of text here, these keywords, and some links and such. And so that's another example of a blog post. Um, let's see, here's another one, another client over here, um, rsc-online.com slash blog. By default, your site might not have the blog directly uh, accessible like this. You'll have to check your settings. Go back to the video that we talked about, uh, about setting a static page. There's a comic shop in Mission Valley. And so uh, here is a blog post, the latest one, published today. Uh, is the comic industry in trouble? So then there's a snippet to catch your attention and then read more. And there's another one here about what's coming up with image, read more. And then here's another one about Archie Horror, read more. So some eye-catching graphics, some text, read more. Yes? I have a quick question. You know how you're just going to basically the folder within the file structure of mm -hmm. that site, the blog? Mm -hmm. Does that folder just contain an uh, index.html file that defaults to that? You know what I'm saying? How you behind the scenes, behind the scenes, deep in it, yeah, basically, okay. uh, yeah, WordPress. Because you're not going to a whatever, whatever .html, you're just going to a folder. It's just yeah, that's that's the basic nature of WordPress. That uh, there's a there's technically a blog.html file, blog.php, and it is then automatically serving the latest versions of the blog post. That's just built into WordPress if you do it the way about setting that static home page, which we talked about previously on a previous day. And uh, so then there's these articles, and then you know you you see something here, you want to read more about it. Um, the same sort of thing, uh, you know, big eye-catching uh, graphic. You know, you're still the importance of the blog post is still the text. Uh, but uh, you still want people to get their attention caught, so maybe some kind of bold graphic like Batman in a coffin. Mm -hmm. So then you click Read More, and then that loads up for the rest of the article. You should see that you know there's there's text, there's headlines that uh, divide up the different sections. You want to make chunks of of content uh, for people to read. Um, you know, studies are showing more and more that people are getting, you know, they, um, uh, they're they having shorter and shorter attention spans, which means... I lost my point of... No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get turned off if they see like a yeah. paragraph. Yeah. Exactly. A, a big wall of text. That is a wall of text, but notice how it's divided into little sections with headings. And I maybe want to jump to simply the part about the graphic novel analysis for DC. And then I read that and I, okay, so that's interesting. Then I want to jump over to the Marvel one and then the image one and, and so forth. So this is a lot of text. This is a pretty wordy blog, but it's divided into enough sections and a person doesn't have to read everything word by word. I know that you want to craft something that people want to, that you want people to read from A to Z. But if they get from A to L and then they do the goal that you want them to, which is to click buy now, then you've succeeded. And if you do link it up so that they read one article and then there's more articles for them to read, then they can stay on the site uh, and read more. You know, you use tags and such and uh, categories. I want to read all of the categories regarding uh, sales charts. So it'll show you all of the articles on that. This one started very recently, so there's not a lot of content. There's only March and February content so far. But again, the more you do it, the more you do it, the better. Once a month, 100 words is a great goal. The more you do it, the better. Yes? 
other question, how, how do these, like on this one, for example, how are they setting up the permalinks? Because when you went to a specific, that one, read, read more, it, it looks like it was set up based on title of the, um, of the article. And That's when the you went to the category, it added the folder of that category, then added that. That's also the basic nature of WordPress, that whenever you create a title uh, for your article, um, it will um, put it up on, the, up on the address over here. So it creates a file, you know, is the comic industry in trouble .php. It doesn't show the PHP, but yeah. there it is. Uh, and uh, it takes the title, it puts it up on the address. And then uh, once you link categories to an article, everything that has been added to that uh, category, and you can have multiple, then now it says, here's a category of everything tagged with comic industry analysis. So this, again, how of it, it just works. If we're used to, you know, more like old school style web design, this seems amazing, but now it's kind of basic built into WordPress. You just have to write your stuff on the side, select category, and it does the details for you behind the scene. You don't have to worry about creating subdirectories and linking them together, WordPress does it all. So it, it kind of holds your content in the MySQL database and then the PHP yeah. take care of Yeah, and that's why, that, right? that's why uh, behind the scenes, it's also known as a CMS. WordPress is a CMS, Content Management System. You just create your content, it will manage it. In the old days, I had to create folders and link them together, and I renamed a file, and whoops, that broke my link, so I have to fix that. This like this CMS, like WordPress, like Squarespace, like Joomla, Wix, all of these modern web design building tools, they manage it for you. You just add your content, and it will um, link everything for you pretty well. It'll make archives for you. Everything that you've written will then show up in an archive. Recent posts. That's also great. I read something here. I also want to read over here. Well, what's this about? Uh, uh, what's this? What's this comment here? Or what's this article here? Archie Horror. So what is category categories? Is uh... it's a way to organize. Let's say you've got a uh, like this cabinet over here. On this cabinet, on the top shelf, I'm going to put a certain amount of things, and on the middle shelf, something else. Organization for uh, your blog posts. Uh, you create content and you make up categories. Like this one is in the category of what's this category? Oh, that's within your blog page. Yeah. Categories. Yeah. Kind of like all your DIY articles can go on in one, and then you decide to write on a separate topic, several yeah, posts right. about that topic, and then you just create whatever category, whatever you want to call it. Like that. Yeah. You create these categories that's beneficial for your SEO too because the default category in WordPress is uncategorized. <laughs> and when it's uncategorized, Google can't organize it. So when you are creating your blog posts on the right side, it'll say choose a category. If you haven't, it'll say uncategorized. You can create as many categories as you want and you can put an article into as many categories as you want. Uh, I kind of recommend just up to three, up to three categories because it's too diluted and it's too spread out one, two, or three categories per article, and then write multiple articles around those categories, creating more content for the search engines to find. We're going to talk about that more, or...? About how to actually do it? Um, I think I think we touched on it on, on an earlier day when we talked about... Uh, it's not that complicated, and I think we talked about it on a previous day when we talked about WordPress.com. During lab time and such, I can, I can meet with you to... Maybe remind us about that. Remind you about that. But uh, I think we have uh, touched on it, and it's in one of the videos. Um, let's do one more example. These have been different clients and such. This one is my own personal one um, about uh, comics. So uh, comics and pop culture and such. So on my site, vmcampus.com/blog. Um, I have various uh, kinds of things that I do. Uh, often video content. Uh, so this uh, here's an article, a little again a little teaser. Continue reading. This one's been tagged and organized into different categories. If I want to read all the blog posts about Marvel, I can click there and it'll show that one and that one and that one. 
So the point of doing this organization in categories is for people to go look at more of your stuff. What's the point of my, my own blog right here? Just people to read about comics. Actually, for people to click on the ad so I can get paid. But read my comic stuff. And it's got built in. Which money did you make off of it? Uh, like 20 cents so far. <laughs> YouTube's working better. YouTube's been like 20 bucks a month. Uh, but this one, um, not so much yet. Uh, and so just writing articles, publishing it there. A lot of this is also related to videos. So just a tiny bit of text, but then having a video that's. Um, a little longer. Let's see. Let's see here. This obviously requires a lot more effort because we needed to create that. We'll have a lesson on YouTube later on, a couple of days on YouTube. So YouTube Why? and video is very important nowadays also. Why do you use Vimeo? I've got stuff on Vimeo and YouTube. I just wanted to I'm put it here just for another, another place cool to get uh, cover. cover. Today we're looking at Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, number one. These so it's just a quick one minute video. People think, well, if I'm going to do video, I need a whole crew and great equipment and all of that. I shot this off my cell phone. Uh, I used you know simple Windows Movie Maker. Then it's the it's the music at the beginning plus the editing. You see how it kind of jumps from one angle to another, and then the actual crux I of the video is you talking about this cover and then Sabrina you know, showing about on the it. cover of this spooky mansion. But actually, underneath it all, if you open the cover, it reveals a bloody scene with demons and tentacles and Madam Satan. So I have this series that I do about cool comic book covers. I find an interesting looking cover. I do a quick one minute video about it. I put it up on my Vimeo, put a little link to it on my website, share it on social media and such. And um, just uh, for that's one of the fun things that I do off on the side. But you know, I put a put an ad, Google ads on the side there. If people happen to click on those, I get, get uh, some sense out of that. And that's how people make money off of online you, they put ads on stuff and hopefully not too intrusive and hopefully relevant and then out of their creative stuff they might make a little money off of that so even if you don't have you know a company where you're selling a product or goods and services you could be making some money off of this from your opinions on those game reviews your opinions on comics your opinions on politics write these blogs and then um, I don't I we probably won't really look at it but we'll see how the class goes I might mention about, well, I, I want to do that. I want to get ads on my blog to get a little bit of money off of that. Who knows? Maybe your content will take off, and you will get people clicking in, and you earning a little bit from it here and there. Um, so here's various examples of, of um, blogs, as I said. Uh, I do want to remind you, if you haven't made the note of it, check out our blog, and there are three articles there about the blogs checklist not everything that I talked about I mean not everything that is in those three I, I really talked about there's a lot to talk about I wanna we'll probably do more than one blog uh, assignment but I just wanna start off slow uh, we're gonna do this assignment you're gonna write two blog posts in one week which is you know more than I'm saying is a good goal but I wanna see how we do on this assignment so uh, any questions before we go on to see what the assignment is specifically okay so let's go over to blackboard I've got the assignment up on Blackboard, and I'll pull it up here, and then you can print it. Um, you can print it after I'm done talking. Let's go to Blackboard, and then let's see what the assignment is.
So as I said previously, the, the lectures are right there. I have added a link where that points us over to the playlist on uh, YouTube. And all of the lectures from the various days are all still there. You can still go back and watch the lectures on previous days. Uh, but then I've got here assignments. And now we've got assignment four, logging. Again, uh, don't print that at the moment, please. Uh, but basically, I've, I've got here one weird trick for SEO blogging. It's a little tongue-in-cheek because you probably see that annoying ad all over the online about one weird trick for weight loss and all of that. So I stole that and the one weird trick about blog, uh, about SEO is blogging basically. So if you keep your site updated the search engines are most likely to rank you higher than your competition. One way to do this is to blog. Every company and every company website could have a blog. How often and how much is up to you but for our assignment, we will brainstorm our ideas and we will write two posts. So I've shown various examples of various clients, and then we'll do another little bit of brainstorming after I explain here. But the, the setup basically is um, you do need a GoDaddy website now. The, the .com one, the WordPress.com one that you got from previous weeks, as we talked about last week, that was the training wheels. It has limitations. We don't have a required book. You need to spend your money on getting a real website, real domain website. Most of you have done that. If you haven't done that, you have one more week to set that up and to do the assignment. You do want a real website. You don't want to drive traffic over to that WordPress.com, which you don't have full control of. You want to drive your traffic to your real domain name, your real piece of the internet that you purchased with your own hard-earned money. Um, and if you need help setting that up, I'll, I'll help you during lab time, of course. But basically, you're going to write two blog posts on two separate days. Uh, I don't want you to write it all on one day, turn it in, and you're done. Write something for the first half of the week, however you define that, and then something else for the second half, however you define that. And the requirements are write one blog post of at least 100 words during the first half of the week, add at least one image to the post, and add at least one link to an external website. Now, when I was showing the examples of the sites, most of them had the stuff that we wrote and a link to some other website. You might think, well, what's the point of that? The point of that is that when you link your blog post to someone else's blog post, um, and if they've got WordPress, their WordPress will tell them, a new website has linked to your website. Uh, at minimum, that other person says, great, I've got a link to my blog. At best, what's in it for you is that they then check out your site, giving you a little traffic, and at super best, they link back to you because they wrote something on their blog and referenced your blog post. So the reason we link to other blog posts is to make ourselves known to other sites so that other sites can link to us and get traffic to us from their site. So you want to figure out, you want to link to some other site, but don't link over to Wikipedia, that's worthless. You're not going to get a link back from Wikipedia. Don't link over to the New York Times, they're not going to link back to you. Link over to some other related website about your particular topic. I'm a comic book website, I'm going to simply search review of Spider-Man number 200. I'm going to find an article link to them, and then they may link back to me. It's not guaranteed, but it doesn't hurt to try. But a competitor probably will not link back to you. Yes, it is a fine line that you need to figure out here. Some competitors will not link back to you, but what if you link to related sites that are not really competitors? What if you're linking to some other legal kind of website, not directly a DUI competitor, but a family law kind of blog? you guys are both law and maybe they want to link to you because it relates somewhat to their field. So maybe not direct competitor link back, but related. That's uh, the first post. And then write one more blog post of at least 150 words during the second half of the week. Also add an image, also add a link. You need to send me your GoDaddy address, whatever your .com or .net or dot biz or whatever you created, you need to send that to me obviously so I can read your article and grade you. Um, I'll be looking for of course that one is 100 words at least, one is 150, you can do way more than that but I'm not giving us a credit. 100 words and 150 words, one picture each, at least one picture. At least one picture each, at least one link each. 
subject is completely up to you. I didn't constrain you to anything. I want to see possibly some ideas of what you get for this. And then we'll have other assignments where we refine our blogging, but I want to get us started like this. Ten points due next week, a week from today, 11 p.m. Any questions so far? The big question that people might have is about what am I going to write? Writer's block. Um, if anyone would like, we can do a little bit of brainstorming here. Um, if anyone would like to volunteer, what's your site about? And you don't have an idea, tell us what your site is and maybe we'll think of an idea or two. Yeah. Mine's a criminal, DUI criminal defense website. Okay, law practice, DUI and criminal. Okay, so um, the thing here that, I, that I'm asking myself uh, and I think I said it on an, on an email, um, to me, looking at that together makes me think that it's the same thing, but it's two different things, right? You are representing people for DUIs and representing people for criminal things? DUI is actually a criminal defense, but a lot of people think it's not, and I like to separate it because I don't want to feel, I don't want to make drunk drivers feel like they're criminals. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something maybe somehow we can figure out to write a blog post about an introduction to that, that they are related, but they're separate because of these reasons. So maybe, you know, some sort of article that's, what's the difference between, you know, again, thinking about someone typing into Google, into Bing, think of how they would type to search for this stuff. Write an article based on what you think people might search for. What's the difference between DUI attorney and a public attorney? DUI attorney and a public attorney. Obviously, there's a big difference there, and you can probably talk about that. You know, the public attorney is public defender, public defender is very overworked and uh, might not do the best job for you. So uh, that's why hiring someone to do a good job would be good. Write a hundred words on that. Uh, so the difference between the two, off the top of my head, anyone? Have any opinion here about maybe what might be valuable to know about this? Uh, how much will it be? Why it cost? Me? <laughs> hey, that's a good. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. How much does it? How much does it do? How much will it be? Why it cost? Me? That's yeah. a pretty good one. That's my next one. <laughs> now, like I heard, uh, I got the my my older brother got one, and he told me he had to pay some SR twenty one or something. Like SR twenty two. Yeah, something like that. He had to pay that. I don't even know what it is. Maybe what is an SR twenty two or whatever. It's I don't it's, know if it's insurance. It's a, or it's a statement from insurance uh, saying that you have continuous auto insurance. Oh. Hmm. Yes. What about all of the consequences that in case you do okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. I know those really well. Hmm. What is the legal? Well, you kind of have to with how much does it do you like cost? Yeah. Because that's kind of sort of the same thing. But it's related. I'm asking it in different ways. It's been yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's be. fine to write them both if they are different enough because one could be literally the cost. What does it cost me to get through it? And what is the consequence as in like my family and then now yeah. I've got to deal with uh, mental uh, anguish and, and that sort of thing. So that could be two separate articles or it could be the same one, just more ideas. Um, Alternative to drinking alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> How not? Or how? Ryan Corn can give you a case. No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is it better to drive while stoned? I'm just kidding. I like that. Um, <laughs> uh, what is the legal blood alcohol content order? Which which ranges by state to state. Uh, I'm gonna write this down. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put this up on Blackboard for for all of us if we'd like to see it. Well, you don't have access to Blackboard, but yeah, you can you can get that. Uh, okay, let's move on. If does anyone have any other uh, maybe for your particular website any so we can bring some for you? Yes. Mine's a bakery. Um, that it's an online bakery for just for the local area. That um, yeah, um, that delivers uh, pastries that are pop culture inspired. Now, I often, <laughs> what's that? Oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes in my uh, in my classes, I. I, I make up a fictional company, Victor's Bakery, because I hardly run into people that actually have a bakery. 
but see now we've got one here. So I have to think of another fictional business next time. Uh, so what because I do this all the time in my classes and I make up a fictional bakery, I have so many ideas for this one because recipe of the month. You have these different things that you sell, cupcakes or you know specific kinds of things that you sell. You could be you could have a recipe of the month where you focus on one particular pop culture baked good. Um, maybe not giving away the whole secrets of what you do. Maybe don't put in that you put in that extra nutmeg and you put in this cloves and such. Make a version of it so that if someone you know passes it on, they're not taking your recipe. But once a month, I can think about writing 100 words, which is going to be the ingredients, the steps, a little commentary, and a picture. Now, everyone can look at a recipe and try to do a recipe and fail. So then that's why they're going to instead click the button of you that says, deliver one to me. Because the pro will make a better one. I got one. Yeah. Uh, not a question type, but uh, more of a statement. Uh, mm -hmm. Cricket flour, 80 grams of protein per cup. <laughs> Alternative <laughs> flowers uh, or alternative ingredients. Yeah, dude. Made of crickets? Yeah, ground up dried crickets. People use it to bake them. And it's really good for you. A lot of protein on, on that, huh? It almost sounds like you could do the same with cockroaches. Uh, yeah, like they're almost the go. same thing. No, not any cockroaches. It is. <laughs> I'm could be, yeah, could be. People, uh, people know. Some cultures know that some in, some bugs are good for us, even though some of us might like just be, hey, that's gross. But uh, every culture finds something interesting. Like I said earlier, when I saw those chapulines at that Mexican food restaurant, those are grasshoppers right there. Uh, so there's always something to eat, basically. So um, this is like some article, perhaps. Um, maybe there's something that you're doing differently than the rest. Maybe everyone is using plain old all-purpose flour, but you focus on arrowroot powder or you know some other thing. Maybe you don't use the the plain old you know C and H uh, refined sugar, and you use more of the turbinado sugar. So you could be writing on a regular basis how you're different. So you know, title it something like you know our uh, our our alternative approach or some sort of snappy title to have a long series and anything that we talk about here you don't you, the thing is you're not going to always be writing this article you're going to think about different ideas for each of these uh, this feels nice. all of these different uh, uh, all of these different ones are going to give you different ideas to go on and mix and match anyone else like let's say you guys wanted to find an online bakery how might you think about searching what are you in the mood for what do you want to eat? Anything? Yeah, order order baked goods online, basically, right? And it gets delivered to you. Yeah. So uh, maybe thinking about uh, terms, if, if you do it, any sort of health benefits, like healthy versions of the classics. Or what is, or uh, how to bake a healthy cookie. How to bake a healthy cookie. And you've got that kind of article, 100 words, and then you're showing the cookies that, that you guys do, and, and then of course sneak in a buy now button, and then maybe they read that article, they get enticed, and then they, they, they buy. How far do you deliver? Well, I'm doing this like in San Diego. So the farthest um Oceanside. I'll think it more like maybe like a Escondido. Oceanside like I'll be going to Camp Tunnel too. Yeah. Um that'd be information to definitely put in your about us page. Mm -hmm. Uh, your area, maybe have a little drawing of San Diego County and then a little circle how far you go. I think low carb cookies would be interesting if there is such a thing. Yeah. Maybe cr cricket flour, yeah, all low carb cookies. Almond flour, yeah. Yeah. low carb yeah. recipes. So, thinking in terms of more uh, open ended low carb recipes, uh, I had one also here. Um, it was. Um, 
You don't chase a cricket farm? I have a, a cricket farm, and I'm raising some myself. They, they taste like nuts. Like, For the like purpose of, of well, eating them. Yeah. You got a cookie? You bring? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to. I'm growing a batch right now. I'll, I'll bring some. Growing a batch. <laughs> I haven't tasted that. Uh, I'll, I'll need a couple thousand before I can get the flower going. <laughs> Well, maybe by the end of the semester. Yeah, there you go. I kind of feel bad for the crickets now. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, oh, I got one. How about, okay, you do stuff ba based on pop culture. Uh, some sort of, you know, monthly um, uh, series on on a gallery of some of the coolest things you've made. Like uh, that, uh, you know, that TARDIS cake we did that one time or... Uh, the Ghostbusters shape cookies or whatever. So, monthly gallery of our best, um, you know, goodies. They don't always have to be literal. Question the the ones for this up here really lent themselves to what people will search for, but here also. This is a different tactic where you're going to create content so that then you can share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook. Someone on Facebook sees it and picks it up and shares it to their 500 friends. Then someone else in those 500 friends shares it to their 500 friends. And then your post is getting shared across all over Facebook or social media and maybe driving more traffic back to your site. So some good ideas here. Um, anyone else on their own sort of topic that you're kind of drawing a blank on? If nothing, I have a suggestion for kind of like a good get unstuck type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Uber suggests.io. You, know, you can you can type in a term, a couple words that make sense for what, and then it'll give you an overwhelming amount of suggestions of things that you could. Uber suggest.io. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Type in cookies. Uh, <laughs> cookies. <laughs> cookies. It gives you alternative words. Like the uh, kind of, and then if you do the word cloud, it'll give you a visual <laughs> representation. See, co cookie recipes. Uh, this is a weird one, but yeah, it'll kind of give you a visual representation of you know the, the volume of things out there that people care to look at. And then probably combine that with like uh, Google Trends, you know, maybe check if, you know, because this is basically giving you an idea alphabetically of that word based on like, you know, see how it has Google Trends on there? It'll mm -hmm. kind of give you an idea of it, its current popularity. You, know. mm -hmm. you can do that with like AdWords too, though, right? See how yeah, so this is, this is one of those things that helps you. Because AdWords will focus primarily on searches, um, those crazy. kind of purchasing words type of thing. I mean, that's their goal because you know you they want they they provide a very sophisticated tool, but primarily geared towards uh, pay pay per click ads. This is just a random, just based on the popularity of the term. So it's different ways to think about sort of uh, concepts and synonyms and. And, and all of that, so I'm sure this and many other sites exist. So this could be here, cookies you can freeze. So I could, you know, write an article on that. Cookies you don't have to bake. That might be a big one. Uh, so another way is simply loading up a search engine. Remember, we're uh, in this class, we're talking about Google and Bing, so I try not to really say Google it. Uh, we're going to be just searching for it. Uh, so if I if I start typing, you know, if I want to write an article about cookies, and then I start to get um, here, I t if I have cookie and Bing is suggesting cookie recipes from scratch, I might want to write something mm. about that. So whatever you're going to be writing about, you might want to plug it into your favorite search engine and see what suggestions you get for ideas to write. So what I'll do for this point then is, um, if there aren't any more. Uh, concepts what, or questions, what we'll do is we'll have some lab time for, for the rest of the day. Um, and if you need any help um, brainstorming and such, call me over. Uh, the homework is up on Blackboard now. If you haven't turned in a previous homework, remember to turn it in to still get some points for that. You won't get full credit if it's late, but you know, getting up to nine 
out of 10 points is still very good, better than zero points. We're not going to have a huge ton of assignments, so if you miss a whole assignment, that might preclude you from getting a, the grade you were looking for, so make sure you turn in all your work. Um, we'll have some lab time now, I'll upload the video, and then uh, that's it. So if, uh, if you need anything, go ahead and call me over.